according to chapter number 4 in which we'll be talking about pediatric cardiology and uh, we'll be talking about uh, congenital heart diseases the first thing that i would like to start is the fetal circulation so before the child is born the circulation of a child has certain differences with the circulation of a child after the child is born so the fetal circulation has slight differences with the neonatal circulation and as the child is born there are certain transitional changes that occur from the fetal to the neonatal circulation if these transitional changes do not happen then the child can suffer from many problems for example i told you in neonatology that if the child's uh, pulmonary pressures do not fall as they should fall if they do not fall after birth then the child can suffer from a condition which is referred to as a persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn it will obviously result in a right to left shunting through an open ductus arteriosus which can lead to differential cyanosis and labile hypoxemias so it's very important necessary for these transitions to happen smoothly from the fetal circulation to the neonatal circulation so before i talk about how those transitions occur you should first be aware about what is the fetal circulation and what are the important differences of the fetal and the neonatal circulations so the first most important difference as you can see is that the pulmonary pressures in the fetal circulations usually are very high i told this in neonatology also that why are the pulmonary pressures in the fetal circulations very high contributed mainly by the presence of fluid in the alveoli which are pressing the pulmonary vessels in addition there is intrauterine low oxygen saturation which actually uh, results in uh, pulmonary vasoconstriction and also there are some potent pulmonary vasoconstrictors which contribute to this pulmonary hypertension so a pulmonary hypertension during the fetal circulation is a physiological phenomena you do not have to worry about it but this pulmonary hypertension if it persists after the child is born it definitely can have a detrimental effect over the child's outcomes in comparison to the pulmonary pressures the placental circulation is a low pressure circulation and that also i told you when i was doing pphi now the placenta and not the lungs are performing the main function of gas exchange we all know that after the child is born it is the uh, lungs which perform the function of gas exchange but not in the case of a fetal circulation in the fetal circulation it is the placenta which is performing the function of the gas exchange and the next thing is that because the pulmonary pressures are very high in the fetal circulation the right sided pressures in the heart are more than the left sided pressures so after birth it is the other way around after birth it is the left sided pressure of the heart which is more than the right sided pressure but not in the case of a fetus in the case of a fetus the right sided pressure is more than the left sided pressure so these are the important differences between the fetal circulation and the neonatal circulation the pulmonary pressures are very high in the fetal circulation which will definitely fall after the child is born the placental circulation is a low pressure circulation in the fetus the placenta performs the function of gas exchange in the fetus while after the child is born it is the lungs which perform the function of gas exchange the placenta is usually removed and then the right sided pressure in the heart is more than the left sided pressure in the fetal circulation after the child is born it is the left sided pressure in the heart which becomes more than the right sided pressure so with these differences in mind let us now come to the fetal circulation now the fetal circulation will start with the main organ which is performing gas exchange which is the placenta so the placenta as i told you is the main organ which performs the gas exchange it's a low pressure circulation and the placenta will be the main site of gas exchange now the oxygenated blood from the placenta will enter into the umbilical vein so the umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood so umbilical vein is the only second vein in the body which although is a vein will be carry oxygenated blood the other vein which although is a vein but carries oxygenated blood is the pulmonary vein however it is noteworthy that although the placenta is performing the function of gas exchange in the fetal circulation it is not as competent for gas exchange as the lungs 
Therefore, even though placenta is performing the function of gas exchange, it will not be able to provide a very high partial pressures of oxygen and therefore the partial pressures of oxygen in the umbilical vein remains relatively low with the PaO2 values remaining between 30 to 35 millimeter of mercury, which is quite less considering that the artery or the vein is arising directly from the site of gas exchange. This umbilical vein, which has a PaO2 of about 30 to 35 millimeter of mercury, it is divided in such a way that 50% of this umbilical vein enters into the portal circulation, but the remaining 50% of the umbilical vein bypasses the portal circulation and enters into the inferior vena cava through the ductus venosus. So what is the ductus venosus doing? Ductus venosus is bypassing the portal circulation and allowing 50% of the umbilical vein blood to enter into the inferior vena cava. So the inferior vena cava which is primarily bringing deoxygenated blood from the lower half of the body, it gets a branch from this ductus venosus which carries 50% of the umbilical vein blood and drains into the inferior vena cava thereby raising the oxygen saturation of the inferior vena cava. So inferior vena cava which you can see was blue now suddenly becomes red because it becomes high in oxygen saturation. Why? Because the but the oxygenated blood is draining into the inferior vena cava. So the partial pressure of inferior vena cava after the ductus venosus drains oxygenated blood into it becomes relatively high which is about 26 to 28 millimeters of mercury. This is in contrast to a very low oxygen saturation of the superior vena cava. So the superior vena cava has an oxygen saturation a PaO2 value of only 12 to 14 millimeters of mercury. So you can see which is more in oxygen saturation. Is it the superior vena cava or the inferior vena cava? Obviously, it's the inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava has an oxygen saturation, PaO2 value of not oxygen saturation, a partial pressure of oxygen of about 12 to 14 millimeters of mercury in comparison to uh, inferior vena cava which has a partial pressure of oxygen of about 26 to 28 millimeter of mercury. And why is PaO2 having a higher partial pressure of oxygen? Because the ductus venosus carries oxygenated blood from the umbilical vein into the inferior vena cava. So inferior vena cava which before the entry of ductus venosus were primarily deoxidated suddenly becomes quite oxygenated. The placental circulation Oxygenated blood drains into the umbilical vein. 50% of the umbilical vein enters into the portal circulation. The remaining 50% of the umbilical vein enters into the ductus venosus. And this ductus venosus bypasses the portal circulation and drains this oxygenated blood into the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava thereby becomes oxygenated. And as you can see, its PaO2 values is about 26 to 28 millimeter of mercury. Now, this inferior vena cava then enters into right side of the heart, the right atria. So this inferior vena cava now enters into the right atria. So at the point where this inferior vena cava enters into the right atria, at that point there is a flap. You would usually consider to be the lower part of the septum secundum which divides the inferior vena cava blood entering into the right atrium in such a way that some of the blood enters down into the right ventricle while the remaining blood, about one third of this blood will drain into the left atria through the foramen ovale. So what is the foramen ovale? Foramen ovale is a opening which is present in the atrial septum which allows the blood from the right atria to move into the left atria. And why should this blood enter into the left atria? Because this blood, as I told you, is a relatively oxygenated blood. And left side of the heart is the side of the heart which will pump the systemic circulation. So this blood from the right side of the heart has to enter into the left side of the heart so that it flows into the body. So what is that conduit point? What is that opening through which the right atria blood enters into the left atria? It is the foramen ovale. And why the blood will be able to move from the right to the left? 
it is because again the fetal circulation the right side heart pressures are more than the left sided heart pressures now this blood from the left atria will then enter into the left ventricle this is the left ventricle and from the left ventricle this will enter into the aorta and then will drain into the lower half of the body so this is the aorta and this is the lower half of the body so the body both the lower half and the upper half will be getting oxygenated blood including the brain now lower half of the body later on as you will see there will be some mixing of the deoxygenated blood also which will happen for the lower half of the body but the upper half of the body which primarily includes the brain that usually will be only oxygenated blood so the upper half of the body so from the arch you know the arteries that starts from the arch of aorta which includes the brachiocephalic the carotid the left subclavian so the brain also will get oxygenated blood because in the left side of the heart you are getting oxygenated blood the coronary circulation also arises from the descending aorta from the ascending aorta the coronary circulation this is the coronary circulation so not only the brain but even the heart will be receiving only oxygenated blood from the arch will be derived the carotids so the brain will be receiving oxygenated blood and from the ascending aorta will be arising the coronary circulation so even the coronary circulation the heart will be getting oxygenated blood now in contrast to the inferior vena cava which is carrying more or less oxygenated blood the superior vena cava so this is the superior vena cava is carrying deoxygenated blood from the upper half of the body and as i told you the oxygen partial pressure of oxygen po2 of superior vena cava is relatively just about 12 to 14 mm of mercury which means it is carrying deoxygenated blood in comparison to the po2 of inferior vena cava which is much higher which is about 26 to 28 mm of mercury so why is the superior vena cava not oxygenated because an umbilical vein does not drain into the superior vena cava the inferior vena cava became oxygenated because the umbilical vein through the ductus venosus was opening up into the inferior vena cava but the superior vena cava is carrying the blood from the upper half of the body and enters into the right atria from the right atria this blood will enter down into the right ventricle where it will mix with that blood which was the inferior vena cava blood which had also entered into the right ventricle so now this blood becomes more or less deoxygenated this deoxygenated blood will then enter into the pulmonary artery so you know the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery will be carrying the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle and where does the pulmonary artery go pulmonary artery will go into the lungs so the pulmonary artery although is an artery will be carrying deoxygenated blood like the umbilical artery which also is an artery but carries deoxygenated blood so which are the two veins in the body which are veins but carry oxygenated blood umbilical vein and the pulmonary vein which are the two arteries in the body which are arteries but carry oxygenated uh, deoxygenated blood one is pulmonary artery the other is umbilical artery this pulmonary artery now takes the blood to the lungs ideally should take the blood to the lungs but the lungs are at very high pulmonary pressures i just not told you in the case of a fetus the pulmonary pressures are very high fetus is in a state of physiological pulmonary hypertension so because of that this blood which was going to the lungs is unable to reach the lungs again because of the fact that the pulmonary pressures are very very high so only about 5% of the blood will be able to enter into the lungs only about 5% of the blood